Good morning on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter. I'm going to read the collect for this day and then I'll read the gospel. God, our Redeemer, you've delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Gospel is taken from St John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them, are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Thanks be to God for his word. <clears throat> I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In 1946, when I entered the world, my mother was already in her mid-forties. In those days, very old to be having a baby. I was the youngest of five, and ours was a happy home. Not much money to spare, but lots of love. I soon realised that my mum was a lot older than other children's mothers, and that kick-started my brain into thinking about death. I didn't see much of my father because six days a week, yes, six days a week, he was at work for eight o'clock in the morning and often not back in the house until after my bedtime. But when he was around, he was a very gentle, loving dad. Because I was six years younger than my closest sister, I spent a lot of time with my mother and we did a lot of foraging together. I still spend hours picking blackberries in season, even if there are still some in the freezer left over from the previous year. My mother did all the shopping, and I would nearly always be with her. That was before I started school. She paid all the bills, and she only used cash. My childish mind put two things together. My mother dying, and me being left an orphan. I hatched a plot for survival. As nearly everything good, and all the money to keep our household going, came out of my mother's handbag, even the handkerchief that I used to have to spit on so that she could wipe me mucky face. All of this came out of my mother's handbag. So I decided that her black leather bag was the secret of family happiness. And so I said, Mummy, when you die, can I have your handbag, please? She didn't explain, but simply said, yes, darling. She didn't even laugh at me. Many years later, Mother reminded me of our conversation and then explained some facts to a then adolescent Robert. I never saw, you see, that the, fam the Friday ritual when my father came in from work and gave his unopened pay packet to my mother, thereby putting the family that he loved to bits above himself and above all other considerations. 
nor did I see my mother giving my father his pocket money for his cigarettes and his beer. The depths of their love still inspires me today after their deaths within a few months of each other, some 46 years ago. In today's Gospel that I've just read, Jesus is speaking at the Last Supper and is preparing his friends for his betrayal, his passion, his crucifixion and his death. And while doing this, he makes them a promise that is as true today for us as it was for them 2,000 years ago. I will not leave you orphaned. Those who love me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. A wonderful promise. Even though we, here in Doncaster, cannot worship in the Minster, we still can hold each other in bonds of love until this pandemic passes and we return to our churches, not out of a sense of duty, but by God's grace, summoned by love. In the meantime, as a good Methodist minister friend of mine says of our relationship with Jesus, if you're worried, don't wrestle, just nestle. Amen. Some prayers. Lord, grant that the Church, guided by the Spirit of Truth, may keep and declare the commandments of God. May we so love, live in the divine love that the Spirit will live in us and be our guide. With the eyes of faith, may we see Christ in our families, our friends, our neighbours, in all whom we meet. Lord, help us to live as you have commanded and help us to be channels of peace in our communities. We pray especially for those who have no comfort, for those who are lonely, those who in isolation do not hear another human voice. Have pity on all children, but especially those who are orphans and all who are neglected and abused. Help us to work together to give them the protecting love that will bring them new lives. <clears throat> and we pray for those who have tried to live by the truth in this world and who now have met you face to face. We pray for all those whom we love but see no more especially those who loved us into life. We rejoice that they live forever with God, and in the fullness of time, may we and all God's children live with them in the light of heaven. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who reveals himself to all who love him. Amen. Now, we pray the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus gave his friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God give you grace to follow all his saints in faith and hope and gentleness and the blessing of the God of love, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit 
be with you and remain with you evermore. Amen. God bless you.